So, Ken Buck from Colorado's 4th District, I believe, decided on Friday that even though we are exceeding numbers in the coronavirus and there's a lot of other things to worry about, he decided he was going to try to get a nice little paycheck from the NRA. So, he made a viral video where he called out Beto O'Rourke and Joe Biden. And I'm guessing he ordered an AR-15 from Call of Duty. The nice little American flag stickers all around it. Looking all pretty, you know. And uh, t picked up the gun and in the ad, challenges them to come get his gun. Now, my biggest issue with this is the messaging. Now, honestly... It's not just the messaging, it's the fact that he is fake. Um, complete fake. And, and I'll, I'll bring that up here in a second. But the messaging. Because, you see, there is unfortunately a number of people in this country who are stricken with some mental instability issues. And they see a congressman, a, a well-respected, upright congressman. And... He's telling people with an AR-15 or a gun of any sort in his hand, why don't you come get it? He sees a guy who is paid to debate, use his wit, his fact, his brain to argue his ideology. But this man goes straight for the gun, and that's normal, apparently. So this person who sees this ad... Well, let's say they happen to get red flagged, and they own a gun. What do you think is going to happen to the police officers that go and try to take that gun? Yeah, it's dangerous messaging. It's real dangerous messaging. Um, and, and it all came because this fake wannabe is just trying to get donations from the NRA. And... There's a few ways I can point out how. Number one, just pay attention to how he's holding that gun. And you can kind of tell he's not really held it before, or not very often anyway. And I would question whether he's ever shot it. As he took the time to get the American flag decal all over it, he never took the time to wonder, hey, why is it flat up here? It's for optics. It's for a scope. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to really be a... a a super soldier without a goddamn scope. You need some sort of optics on that thing. I'm not saying you need something for a sniper rifle, but any sort of sights. Iron sights pretty difficult to shoot with by itself, especially for somebody who obviously has the money to put the American flag decal all over it and get it, you know, all looking pretty. This man is a joke. And it's because of his actions and because of things like wanting to just spend his time going viral that make me really hate gun culture. I support the Second Amendment, and I believe we should all have the right to have a gun. But I don't believe that your first action when met with opposition is to go grab a gun. I don't think that's the way that we should uh, to fight our ideology. I don't think that's a principled place to, to make your stance is, okay, you're opposing me? I'm going to run and go get my gun. Because I have no other ability to argue my point. But even more than that, his grandstanding of being viral. Come on. <laughs> I, I can't stand it when someone like Cardi B decides to call out Trump for that, that exact reason. I can't stand when someone like Ken Buck decides to pose with an AR-15 in a video to go to to go viral it's pathetic and sad and the implications that could and the fallout that could happen now granted do i believe many people really look up to ken buck and they're like hey that guy he's standing his ground i'm going to too and there's a much different idea of standing your ground and going for a weapon but they're the one is very cowardice. The other is to be principled in your ideology and to use your wit. 
Because at the moment you're going for a gun in any situation, it's already too late, and there's no coming back from it. If that's your first reaction, I don't know why you have a job where you're supposed to use your brain, because you obviously do not have one. Uh, in other news, Elizabeth Warren has dropped out. I actually don't take much joy in seeing Elizabeth Warren drop out. I know I should. I'm a Bernie supporter, and I'm a progressive, and her dropping out actually really kind of helps our side. Uh, some numbers saying as high as 60% of her voters will come in and, and vote for her, or vote for Bernie, that would have voted for her. But it's still the fact that, and, and even though it's in the last few months and whatever, she was not a true progressive, I don't get caught up in that tag with her. Because I don't believe Elizabeth Warren ever was a progressive. I think she catered to that side. But I really think that she belonged on the other side of the aisle. Uh, if anyone is familiar with Sager from The Rising, she's a new Republican. She's on the new conservative side. I shouldn't even say Republican. But they're a populist group, much like the populist group on the left. And I know you're thinking she does not belong on the other side of the aisle. Not with her girl boss and Yaz queening. But all of that is really fake. And it becomes very apparent, like when you read her book, her book, Two Income Trap, which is a book that essentially praises conservative family and the, the conservative uh, social norms. Her, her real, I guess, liberal side of her is the fact that she's really good at going after corruption in banks which I argue doesn't have to be a liberal thing or a, per a person on the left. That can easily be a Republican thing. We just need a Republican candidate to actually stand up for that. And Elizabeth Warren, believe it or not, could have probably at some point have been that. It's too late now. There's no way she could switch sides. I mean, she's seen as a far left candidate. But only, I think, because because of the fact that she went after the banks, which, again, I don't see how that's ideology, ideologically left or right. But her, her obviously taking notes from former Clinton staffer and Harris staffers and, and going all girl boss on everyone just kind of ruined it. And, and if you're questioning the authenticity of her and her wokeness, You'd have to look no further than the last debate, no, not the South Carolina debate, the Nevada debate, where she just tore Mike Bloomberg up. And you saw this authenticity about her. You saw this spark in her eye. You saw the, the beast that we all respect in Elizabeth Warren. And it came out on those issues because that's where she stands. That's her home. And when she started going to this weird, woke, SJW preaching Yaz queen, she lost a lot of support. And it wasn't just the Bernie supporters who had a problem with her, and trust me, there were a lot, but it was also because it came off very fake. And look, I'm not saying that Elizabeth Warren doesn't believe that she can inspire young girls to to run for president or be a woman to become a president. I believe that she can do that too, but doesn't have to be a massage, you know, to, to, she doesn't have to be the anti-misogynist candidate. She doesn't have to be the Yaz queen that she kind of pretends to be. I believe that she wholeheartedly wants to inspire young girls to run for president but in her own way and the only way that we've seen that recently was her going after bloomberg but she needs to come back to who she really is and you can see a lot of that in the two income trap her book the the campaign that she ran to get elected to be senator in the first place was actually pretty conservative not conservative by our day and age but what really should be the new conservative and i think that it's kind of sad that we lost that opportunity 
to have somebody who could have actually been a conservative populist. Again, it's all over. And I know it's not probably the right thing or the, I don't know, the Bernie bro thing, I don't know how to say it, to support or have any sort of feelings for Elizabeth Warren. But I will say this, fellow Bernie supporters, we kind of need her. We need her right now until Bernie Sanders decides which way he's going to pivot. He's either got to come in closer to the right, or he's got to go full stop left. But this halfway Bernie Sanders is not going to work. And the easiest thing that we can do right now to pick up momentum again is to hire Elizabeth Warren to v for VP. There's no real other thing he can do. He can come out swinging like crazy, and it might work, and it might work really, really well. But I don't see that as Bernie. He's even doing the media, you know, touring right now, and he was on Maddow, and he was apologizing for us, his supporters, because we're sometimes a little mean and unruly. But he's not going to be, I think, the burn-it-all-down candidate that Trump is. So he's got to go to the right. And if he doesn't, he's not going to win. And we all have this idea about what Bernie Sanders is. And Bernie Sanders is already the compromise for us. So it kind of sucks to say, hey, he needs to move a little bit more at this point. But understand that even if he does, it's, it's political jargon. He's not going to change his ideology. He'll get Elizabeth Warren, who will spout her ideology. And the wine moms and everybody like that will be like, hey, I like Elizabeth Warren. And hey, Bernie's kind of old. And we, I think we all know that if Warren signs on as his VP, it's going to be Warren versus Stacey Abrams. That's going to be a rough one. But it's the only shot that he really has. He can't go someone like Tulsi Gabbard. She doesn't have enough re name recognition. And everyone hates her. Unfortunately, a lot of people hate Tulsi Gabbard. So what's he really got? I mean, I guess he could do Nina Turner, but she has no recognition at all. She's a fantastic progressive, and I love her to death. But it wouldn't help the campaign right now. Elizabeth Warren is the only answer for Bernie, and it sucks. <laughs> it really does in a lot of ways. Because, again, I see her as somebody who's not even on the left. Which, again, I guess is fine. But... The Bernie Sanders campaign needs to define itself, and it needs to define itself quickly. It's a very middle of the road. We're not being aggressive. We're not going to hold back. Biden and his cohorts are the worst thing. They're the worst threat to America's future. They're, they're, they're corporate, corporatist, capitalist ways are going to tank this entire country. And then on the second side of that, they're my friends, and I like them a lot. He's got to choose which way to go before it's too late. And I I hope it's not. We're going to find out in a couple of days. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot from him this week. I think he's still licking his wounds, but he needed to get up. He needed to get up a couple of days ago. We'll see if anything happens in the next day or two, but this could be the end of it. And the only real shot is to get Elizabeth Warren to inject some energy into this campaign. Anyway, that's just uh, my thought on those stories. I'm curious about your input. Um, and definitely on the Ken Buck story. <laughs> I, uh, I've never... I'm not even that big of a gun guy. And as soon as I saw that picture of the video... I didn't even see the video. I, I saw the picture on Twitter and I was like... Why does he have a gun without optics? That's the most ridiculous thing I've seen. Like, if you're, like, I get if you don't have the money to put optics on, but if you've got money for a fancy decal to make it look pretty so you can accessorize it with your socks and, you know, your, uh, your fanny pack, then, you know, put some optics on it if you're going to actually use it. And the more and more looking the way he, he held it, it's, it's pathetic. It's sad. And anyway, curious about your, all your thoughts. I appreciate y'all. Take care.